Hey everybody, Star Guy here. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. Very excited for today's topic where we're going to be talking about multi-level marketing, that's right, MLMs in Star Wars. This particular group is one of the most powerful MLMs I've come across both in real life and in Star Wars, so hopefully you agree. Uh, who we're focusing on is the Nihil, who are depicted in the imagery above here. Uh, to the left you have actual fan art from the Star Wars team. There isn't a whole lot of imagery associated with the Nihil just yet because they are a fairly new organization in terms of just the, the canon itself. Uh, I liken them a lot to Mad Max kind of warriors. They do call themselves Space Vikings and uh, honestly you can kind of see, just look at those two images and tell me that they're not a lot alike. Um, so hopefully that gives you a better depiction of what they might look like because basically they're not a species or anything like that they're just a group of a lot of different people coming together kinda of like a gang in real life you know they're looking for a home they're looking for a purpose they're looking for a cause in life and the night he'll supply them with that in droves so I call it an MLM because it is an MLM you know how this organization operates is you have the eye and the three tempest runners now initially the Nihil existed without the eye it was just the three tempest runners and the organizational structure you see in this chart that I uh, created excuse my triangle I know it's not perfect but it's a pretty good representation if I do say so myself um, but you have the eye that joined in because his father or the eyes Let's just step back a little bit. The eye currently is Marcion Rowe. Marcion Rowe uh, plays an essential role in making the Nihil what the Nihil are right now by supplying them these paths. And these paths are essentially shortcuts through hyperspace, so it allows this group of uh, everyday marauders that came together with the common purpose of pillaging and stealing and things like that. Uh, it made them ultra hyper powerful because now they can jump in and out of a certain territory in seconds and they can strike fear in their enemies because of how they do it. And nobody understands the process by which they're, they're showing up like this. So. Uh, the eye kind of controls it because without the eye, they're just another group of marauders. Now, Martian Rowe took over from his father, Asgar Rowe, who actually established this relationship with the Nihil. And the paths are actually coming from Mari Santeca, who I did another video on that I encourage you guys to check out if you want to know more about her and where these paths are coming from. And uh, essentially they kidnapped her, right? So these guys have no actual power, they have no actual allies, nobody's actually following them in this organization, but they give the organization their power. So that's why I call, you know, say the eye is technically the, the head of the structure, because without this, again, they're, they're basically nothing. That being said though, these three Tempest Runners are no joke, we'll be covering each one of them here as we go along, but uh, they run a crew of about a thousand people strong each, making the Nihil as a whole a little over 3,000 members uh, at the point of the High Republic and some of these stories that are happening. Now they do get trimmed throughout that story because of uh, what this guy has planned ultimately, but again we'll get into that. So these Tempest Runners essentially uh, promote from within the ranks and it's really the strikes here at the bottom that are actually finding new new crew members so typically a strike will go out they'll find six or seven new team members once they have a group that's willing to follow one of these strikes they get promoted to a cloud so a cloud runs a team again typically about five to ten as far as I've seen so far and when these clouds prove themselves they win battles they bring back lots of loot they, they, they gain notoriety they're smart you know they whatever it might be that gets them recognized they get promoted to a storm who's obviously above the clouds and the strikes and once you are a storm you're basically at the pinnacle because these tempest runners seem to be basically unmovable objects I uh, nobody attempts to challenge them everybody's just trying to win their favor and stay on their good sides throughout the story so I can't imagine anybody's vying for this spot I'm sure that they they want it you know they want it real bad there's one point in the story where Martian Rowe uh, is talking to Kasiv, one of these Tempest Runners, and says, uh, because Kasiv was talking about slaying Jedis and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jedis, nobody in this organization has ever actually taken on a Jedi. Martian Rowe has heard stories from his family, he's had a lot of encounters with them, but nobody's actually, you know, gone gone head-to-head -head with them. So Kasiv's talking big, like he can take one on, no problem, would love to, to kill one, add the trophy to his mantle, basically. And Martian Rowe says, uh, just make sure you give us the recommendation of the 
storm that should replace you when you're dead. So that tells you a little bit about um, how you would get promoted to a Tempest Runner. You get, you, you know, you basically you have to get assassinated or uh, murdered <laughs> in this situation. So uh, again, pretty sophisticated MLM. Uh, they abide by the rule of three. So basically, any loot you bring in gets divided amongst the three, and then the eye gets their share if you use one of his paths. So it's basically an equal revenue share opportunity um, that trickles down to the rest of the groups. The lower you are on this uh, pyramid here, the less you're going to make from each hall. But everybody theoretically, you know, you have a home, you get fed, you get money, and you have the opportunity to rise up the ranks. So, very deadly MLM scheme indeed. Now let's cover some of the people within the organization here. So Martian Rowe again is the eye. He took over from his father. They actually kidnapped Mari Santeca generations before that. Uh, they were talking about their grandmother and grandfather actually initially kidnapped Mari Santeca uh, at the time. They don't really get into what they did with Mari Santeca in these paths, but at the time uh, they just said that that was to solve some needs of the org saw some needs in the organization or by that time I guess it was just family so they were just trying to advance in their own lives they didn't really know what to do with Mari Senteca Asgar Rowe, Marcian Rowe's father came in gave them a purpose negotiated this deal the rule of three with uh, these Tempest Runners and created this professional crime syndicate MLM that you see with the Nihil uh, Asgar Rowe was assassinated which we later find out in the, in the story was true uh, by one of the Tempest Runners and Marcian Rowe inherited the organization so it's not even, you just said he's a humanoid species, they don't give us a whole lot of detail about him. He sounds a little bit creepy in the actual stories, so I'm actually going to play that for you because I feel like they can describe it better than I. Who are we? Pan Ata roared, his already deep voice bellowing out of his huge chest, amplified and distorted by the mask he wore which was itself a distorted version of his native Doatin face, with massive heavy brows and horns sprouting from his chin. His words crashed out across the sea of faces staring up at him and the others at his table. Most in the crowd wore masks of their own, of many designs, but one purpose. A few thousand people from many worlds across the galaxy, unified by a desire to take, and kill, and eat. The Nihil! Came the response, a thunderclap rolling back at him. Let's do it right! Lorna D cried, lifting a clenched fist on a thin bare arm, cabled with muscle. She was Twi'lek, of about forty years, whip thin with green skin, the color of swamp water emaciated leku with bone white stripes dangling from the back of her head she wore armored leather made from the hide of a kel dragon and a mask to match with just the one arm bare and a single long bladed knife sheathed on her thigh lorna stood next to pan Eta on a raised platform at one end of the great hall of the nihil at a banquet table covered with rich food and potent liquor. Dozens more of these tables were placed throughout the hall, amid towers of flame, pushing back the endless night. They were laden with indulgences for all to consume from as they chose. Food, drink, drugs, as much as they liked. The storm! The Nihil shouted back. The third and final of the Tempest Runner shouted his own question. This was Cassif, an aged Weequay with skin like sun-dried meat, wearing only a fur cape, stained leather trousers, and his own mask, a thin plate of hammered metal with slits cut into it for eyes, nose, and mouth. A horrible parody of a face. Who guides us? He bellowed. Why? Came the answer, and at these words, the Nihil turned toward another platform, set lower than that of the Tempest Runners, where one person sat alone at an empty table. Martian Rowe. He wore a mask too, but not like the others. 
His was unique, even in the great hall of the Nye Hill. Smoked transparisteel with a single symbol slashed into it. A primitive, brutalist etching. Swirls and lines that evoked a stylized, planet-killing superstorm as seen from space, with its central eye centered roughly over his face. His clothes were simple black pants and jacket over a sleeveless white tunic, and tight leather gloves with padding at each knuckle. His limbs were long, and what parts of his skin were visible were slate gray. He wore no obvious weapons. Martian tilted his head back, gazing out into the void that surrounded them all. Strange lights flickered in the far distance at the edge of vision through the full spectrum. The Nihil called this place No Space, and only they knew how to get there, via secret roads through tortuous hyperlanes unmapped in the galactic databases. Roads delivered by Martian Roe, and his father before him. The Great Hall of the Nihil had no walls or ceiling, just invisible vacuum shields creating a dome of breathable air above a broad durasteel platform hundreds of meters long. It looked and felt as if it were adrift in the great nothing. The symbolism was obvious and intentionally so. With the Nye Hill, <laughs> all was light and life outside. <laughs> Cold, empty death. What do I see? Martian Rose said, his voice quiet, a breath, not a scream. The crowd hushed to hear it. What does your eye see for the Nye Hill? Whatever we want! Came the answering roar. Immediate, every voice lifted, hungry and certain and joyful. Martian looked at Pan Eta and nodded. This was the Doatin show. The gigantic being adjusted the lapels of his leather suit, stylishly cut, its pale turquoise color chosen to set off his yellow skin. That's right, Pan said. Whatever we want. Just like an Abdalish, we killed that convoy dead. We ripped those ships down to the bones and took everything they had. And now, everyone who fought alongside me there gets a share through the rule of three. With the Nye Hill, everyone hates. Pan Eta pointed out off the platform into the strange wilderness of no space where the emptiness was interrupted only by the fleet of ships that had carried the Nye Hill to this place. Martian Rowe cast his eye across the vessels. No two exactly alike, and all reflecting the taste and cultures of their owners to some degree. They did all share a certain brutalist aesthetic, and the glowing green half-spheres that were the path engines. The navigational miracle provided to the organization by Martian and his father. The Nihil's ships, large or small, looked like armored spiked fists coming to pound you into nothing and harvest your corpse. No curves where a straight line would do. Sharp edges. A lack of overall symmetry. The smaller, fighter-like starships larger cloud ships and storm ships, all the way up to the three corvette-sized vessels of the Tempest Runners. Kossiv had the new elite. Pan Eta flew his Elegencia. And Lorna D? <laughs> she called her ship the Lorna D. Much larger, imposing, looming behind the rest of the Nihil fleet with a silhouette like a marine predator was Martian Rose flying palace and fortress, its empty, echoing corridors, the only home he had, the gaze electric.
So as you can see, they all bring their own little distinct flavor to the organization. All three are a little bit different, but they're after the same purpose. And, you know, they each conduct their raids and their organizations in a different manner, but they all come up with the same results. All strike fear and terror throughout the Outer Rim, where historically there really hasn't been much help. Now the Republic threatens that safety that the Nihil have felt uh, with the construction of the Starlight Beacon, which I will be doing another video on. Sounds like an awesome relay station that really connects the Outer Rim to those core worlds and just makes everything a lot uh, better and more centralized throughout the galaxy. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I know it's a little bit of a longer one, but I uh, gave you a lot of info on the Nihil, their organizational structure. So uh, would you be a Nihil? I mean, if you had a choice, sounds like a pretty freeing life, right? I mean, you get access to this awesome technology. You get to be a raider, take what you want. Sounds like a more sophisticated version of being a pirate. You know, couldn't be that bad of a life. So uh, comment below. Let me know what you guys thought. I'll see you in the next one.